how to feel better. Hi, my name is Susie Porter and I help women rewrite their lives so that they can create their happily ever after. So I'm calling this video how to feel better, but also known as how to forgive. Yikes. Because <laughs> I gotta be honest, in my decades of life of trial and error in this uh, thing we call the human experience, I can't, I have not found a shortcut to feeling better if I'm blaming someone else or if I have any unforgiveness in my heart. It's like the good news is all you got to do is forgive. The bad news is you got to forgive, right? And sometimes, sometimes it's very hard. And in my life, I was unconscious of my unforgiveness because I was a good little Christian girl. I went to a Bible college. Of course, I forgive because I'm a Christian. But the kind of unforgiveness and the kind of wound that I had and which many women have and people have is unconscious. It's stuck in there from when we were little kids and maybe, you know, from birth to seven, we're in this really relaxed brain state where stuff just gets downloaded and that becomes our programming for the rest of our lives. So step one, begin with you, right? So this, I've talked about this a lot. One of the biggest mistakes, in my opinion, that my Christian education or the way I interpreted it, maybe I interpreted it wrong, was that I should love others more than me, right? Which I've said before was a was a an unhealthy message for an insecure 17-year-old people-pleasing girl to get, right? To uh to love others more than me and to spell Jesus, to spell joy, Jesus, others, you. Yeah. So I just I um I refute all of those kinds of teachings because the way that I read what Jesus said is he said, love your brother or sister as the, that's a huge two letter world word as you love yourself. So I cannot forgive someone else while I'm, unless I forgive myself, I cannot love someone else unless I love myself. So begin with you. And what I mean by that is, Find out, just get it all out. Like I'm a writer and writing has been a huge part of my healing process ever since I was a little kid. Um, and I find it extremely practical, right? Because the stuff, the the pain of our life is stuck in our mind, in our thoughts, in our head, in our rumination. So when we write, when we grab a pen and we write on paper or a keyboard, whatever, I mean, I, I feel like it's more organic and sometimes more powerful to write with a pen, but I have a best friend who's a professional writer and she only writes on the keyboard. So whatever feels best for you, writing is a great way to get the pain out of your head, out of your heart, onto the page and out of you. So journal, right? If, if, if what we're talking about here is forgiveness, the first thing you have to become aware of is who you're mad at, who you're blaming. So give yourself the writing prompt of, I am mad at, and let it go. Everyone you're mad at from your whole life, why you're mad at them, what they did to you. And then, you know, this, this is the thing about spiritual growth and spirituality that I want to announce to all, anybody who thinks that being spiritual is being like a goody goody holier than thou Mother Teresa. Mm, that has never worked for me. And believe me, I tried for years. <laughs> what really works is being human. I, I love Carl Jung. He's my favorite psychologist, psychiatrist. And I agree with his methodology of embracing and integrating the shadow. And Byron Katie also in her Love Your Neighbor, Judge Your Neighbor worksheet gives us permission to just get it all out. And this is exactly what I do in my writing process. So I'm mad at get it all out. I don't care if it takes 10 notebooks of people you're mad at. It's within you and you've got to get it out, right? I blame like for, for um, 
when I started therapy in 20, when I was 26 years old, which was a couple minutes ago, I uh, began to blame my father. Uh, and that was healthy at that stage those years ago. And then for much of my life, I did blame him because he's my dad, right? He's the blueprint. He's the, um, the archetype for everything. And what I realized after uh, so much um, learning about forgiveness and studying things like A Course in Miracles and just having a lot of therapy and coaches is that if I blame anyone or anything on a human level, I'm keeping myself at the effect of what happened to me when I was seven years old. I'm not seven years old anymore. <laughs> and yet, by blaming my father for what he did to me when I was seven, I was keeping myself a seven-year-old. I was keeping myself in that wound. I was keeping myself in that helplessness. And then the blame just engenders anger and pain and fear. And it's it's a there's no path to happiness as long as you are blaming. And uh it's rough because I believe me, I've been in rooms where I have heard horrific stories of sex trafficking and kids being beaten and raped and abused. There, there is strong justification for hatred and anger and blame and wounds and pain. There's no lack of evidence for it. But there's also no escaping the, the truth that at some point in your adult life, and of course, with the help of therapists or a life coach or somebody who loves you, that we've got to get to a place of releasing that. Uh, a song that I find so healing is by um, India Ari, and it's called Just Let It Go. And she says, you don't have to wait for an apology or for someone else to make amends when you can remember that your healing is in your hands. Just let it go, inch by inch, just let it go. Set yourself free. And that's what it is, inch by inch. You don't have to forgive everybody, everything all at once. That's why number one is begin. You just gotta begin. And actually before step one, you have to ask yourself if you want to forgive. But before you ask yourself that, ask yourself if you want to be happy, because you have to forgive to be happy. I'm sorry. It sucks, right? <laughs> it's, it's, it feels harsh and it feels cruel. And it took me so many years to finally even begin to understand forgiveness. Just in the word forgiveness has so much baggage from the Christian church and from the way that people used it. And that's why... One of the reasons I celebrate and delight and love The Course in Miracles, because in The Course in Miracles, Jesus clarifies all of these things that were very muddy in my, quote, Christian education. And in The Course in Miracles, he says that true forgiveness is when you realize there's nothing to forgive. The person who hurt you, deep down inside, they're innocent. And even though their actions might have been, like, terrible, How can I say this in a way that is wise and intelligent and easily understandable? You forgive your father or you forgive whoever it is that you think hurt you or you believe hurt you or they did hurt you. You don't do it because you're condoning what they did. What they did was wrong. It wasn't okay. You didn't deserve it. It's not your fault. I'll be really crystal clear about that. But when you forgive them and you forgive yourself for all the hate and anger and blame you've been feeling for however many years you've been feeling it, you set yourself free. You do not condone their actions. You do not have to ever see them again. But you set yourself free from the poison that you're drinking. An unforgiving mind is a toxic mind that is a barrier to love, a barrier to healthy, happy relationships, a barrier to 
a healthy body and wealth and success and true joy and bliss. I'm a big fan of forgiveness, but I do understand that it is a challenge and that it is uh, misunderstood. So when you begin with you, you journal, I'm mad at, I blame. And now this, <laughs> this process is 100% up to you how long you need to linger here. No, there's no prescription that I can give you. Well, do this for a week or two weeks or a year. It's 100% up to you. When you get this all out on paper, let yourself feel. And, and you know, I recommend doing this with someone who loves you, maybe a therapist that you trust or a life coach, somebody, a spiritual person who's kind, because you might need to grieve and cry. You might need to beat the shit out of a pillow. You might need to scream. You might need to get what is within you out. And I, I, I advise you to do it in a safe place where you're loved and where you have permission to express your true, raw, ragged feelings, no matter how ugly they are. There's nothing wrong with any feeling, hate, anger, rage, pain. There's, it's impossible to have a good, bad, right or wrong feeling. So journal out your, your anger and who you're blaming get in touch with all the feelings that 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 information elicits within you and then ask yourself again am i willing to forgive and then ask yourself who would i be if i wasn't hurt who would i be if i wasn't a victim who would i be without this pain and my sister, my brother, imagine this version of yourself. Imagine, you know, you can, if you have a great vivid imagination, imagine yourself an eagle soaring. Imagine yourself a hummingbird. Imagine yourself an angel. Imagine yourself the beautiful child that you once were, who was not afraid, who was not wounded, who was not hurt. This is the version of you. This is the aspect of you that if you want to feel better, you need to get in touch with that. In the Bible, there's a verse, uh, the incorruptible seed of faith. And I love this idea of the incorruptible seed. It's a metaphor for that which is incorruptible and unwoundable. This is what our teenagers and our young people need to hear. There's a core within you that is will never be canceled, will never be hurt, will never. There's a part within you that is invincible. And the way to get to it is through <laughs> vulnerability, ironically enough, through vulnerability and through forgiveness. So I'm going to do three videos on how to forgive. This is video number one. Begin with you. Journal everything you're mad at, everything you blame, even if you blame the government. I don't blame you. <laughs> Patriarchy, the system, racism, sexism whatever it is, right? Your college, whatever it is. There's no, there's no limits. There's no censorship. There's no editing. Get it all out. Then let yourself feel that step two. Then step three, ask yourself, am I willing to forgive? And let it go inch by inch, day by day. Set yourself free. You might not feel better today, you might not feel better next week. But the sooner you begin, you will feel better. You will, I promise, get to the other side. I dealt with depression and pain and anger and blame for most of my life. And I am not 100% free. For, I'm about 80, 85%. <laughs> And I feel better without drinking or getting high or any of those things. Spiritual bliss is better than sex, drugs, all of it. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with sex or drugs. <laughs> I'm just saying the bliss that comes from within your own heart, within your own mind, within your own infinite soul will sustain you. God bless you today. 
I pray that you will feel just a little bit better today. And if you're feeling great, that you'll feel even better. There's no, there's no cap on bliss. There's no cap on joy. There's no cap on peace. The peace that passes all understanding, may it rule in your heart and mind today. And it will if you start with you and forgive yourself and everyone and everything else. <laughs> might take a little time, but if you get started today, you'll be closer. Every day, inch by inch, step by step. Take care of every, and notice every thought that you think, how it makes you feel. Take care of your feelings, manage them, and take care of your body. Go for a walk today <laughs> or do some yoga. Take care. Bye.